Hello everyone, uh, today I would like to show you how to make this interesting net-like patterns. So to start off, you can use any shape. Um, it will probably be easiest to see how it looks with a grid. So let's place down a grid and zoom out. Since it's going to be recursive, we're going to start with a no lower number of uh, rows and columns. Uh, the first step is to add, let's add a solver. In the solver, we only need the previous frame. What we're going to do first is we're going to add a uh, UV project. We'll project the UVs so we can get a consistent UV each time. Uh, since the grid shape isn't going to be changing um, on the edges, we can keep an initialized UV to this area and it will work just fine. So I'll just place down the uh, for each based on connectivity and wire that up to the UV project. All right, so what the important bit is how we're gonna pick which faces we want to delete. So there's multiple ways to do this. Uh, for the sake of this tutorial, let's just add a color and change it to primitive and we're gonna do a random. So each primitive is gonna get a random color and what we can do is add an edge cusp. This will separate each of the primitives. Uh, this is important for the next step of when we're gonna subdivide so we can subdivide only one at a time or multiple at a time, but they can't be connected or else it will not work. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna get an attribute wrangle and for simplicity's sake, let's just say if C at CD, we're gonna take the first value, so cd.x or cd.r, doesn't matter, is greater than some value, so let's just say 0.2, and we'll see how that works out. An important thing that I forgot is we're gonna to wanna to run this over uh, primitives, so we need to change the run over primitives. And so what we're gonna do is if it's certain, if it's past a certain threshold, so the first channel of red is above 0.2, we're gonna add to group underscore delete. So this this at group underscore delete, if you have the at group and then put an underscore, that's shorthand for creating a group in Vex. Have to add equals one to set the group to active. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a delete and let's just copy it. And what we're gonna do is select inside of this first delete, We'll add that note, we'll add the group delete, and what let's, let's do, and so it's primitives. So one of them we're gonna have set to delete, selected the other one delete, um, not selected. So the reason I'm doing this is so when we update the colors, when the colors get updated each frame, uh, it will delete a previous group rather than keeping old ones in the group. So we have to reset it each frame essentially. Um, and that's why I've chosen to do it this way. So with the ones that are not selected, this, these ones we're going to subdivide. So we'll subdivide everything in this group and it will divide it just straight down the center. So once we do that, we can merge them back together. It'll go over each of these primitives. It will separate them. It will delete the ones above some threshold. Um, and then it will divide the remaining ones and then it'll merge the results together. So uh, in this case, this didn't actually do much because um, all of the pieces did get subdivided. So let's go to this attribute wrangle. And so let's change it if this is greater than 0.5. So now some this face did not get subdivided. If we change it to something like 0.8, even less will get subdivided. So Let's just keep 0.8 for now because that seems to give a good result. 
And if we go back up and we slowly step forward, what you'll notice is that each frame you'll get a random color in each box. And every time you do that, you do it over and over and over. And we will get this interesting subdivision pattern. So some boxes will get divided more and more and more and more. So we can get a very interesting uh, fractal like pattern and get some random subdivisions. So the next step that we're going to do is to add, let's add normals. And then we're going to attribute delete. We're going to delete the color attribute because we don't need that. Um, it's good for visualization and you could honestly just create an attribute to delete if you would like. That works as well and you could just randomize it that way. But I've just chosen it to use colors because it's simple and it's easy to visualize while you're working on it. So let's delete the uh, primitive color attribute. And so now we just get this cool grid pattern. Uh, one thing to note, because this is recursive, the farther you go in the timeline, you are going to get, not necessarily exponentially, but you will get very rapidly increasing polygon counts. So just be aware of that to not just click towards the end to solve it. The next we're going to do is we're going to fuse. We'll fuse any points. This will just clean up. Uh, this will clean up some points. Um, as you can see, at uh, the will, this will result in end gons, but as far as I'm concerned, this is not going to be a problem in this case. So after we do that, we're going to add a smooth, and this is going to give an interesting result. Um, because what we can do with the smooth is turn off this constraint boundary. Now when we have these polygons and faces uh, visible, it does look quite wrong. Uh, however, when we turn that off, you can see some interesting net-like patterns forming. And so the next step, what we can do is we can file cache this out if we'd like, which is uh, a good idea since if you want to run any other simulations on this, uh, that will be necessary. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do a convert line. This will turn the polygons into actual lines instead. It'll delete the faces. So if you change the wireframe and back, it doesn't change anything. These are all now just lines instead. However, uh, when you do that, the when you convert to lines, uh, each line will be separated. So you have to refuse it together. So let's add a fuse node. Okay, so I'll increase this. You can increase it if you want and it'll delete some. If you, you could get some more interesting patterns. Sure, let's just do that. It looks kind of cool. Um, the next step is to file cache this. So if you're happy with this net like result, then there you go. That That is how you make this a uh, weird abstract net. All right, so now we can catch this out. We do not need the frame. And since we're only gonna serve, we're gonna only save the current frame. You could, if you wanted to, you could do an animation of this if you wanted to, but for our sake, I will just do it like this. So let's save it to disk and then we can load it from disk. So now when we disconnect it, uh, two things will happen. One, we'll have this frozen in time piece of geometry, and two, this will not be solving anymore uh, up here. So we can essentially just freeze that in time, which is good for our purposes since we're going to run a second simulation on it. So next, we're going to do a vellum simulation. I used the vellum, vellum configure hair. And let's attach that. The next thing we'll need is a vellum solver. And we also need a vellum constraints. So let's just wire all these up. All right, so in the vellum constraints, we're gonna change this to pin to target. So we will pin points. 
So let's just grab some points, doesn't matter which ones. We can grab some of these, 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 and these, why not? And let's grab, I guess, this one in the middle. All right, we hit enter and then that will create our pin point geometry. And so let's go over to the vellum, vellum solver and hit play. All right, so as you can see, you can get these very interesting webbed net cloth-like patterns. It's really interesting um, what you can actually do with these. Uh, so that is how I created this render using Bellum and a subdivision algorithm. I will be putting out a part two on how I rendered this in Redshift. So look for that and thanks.